In 2014, there was a strong interest in trying to learn more about sexual assault that occurs on college campuses. So we were asked by the Bureau of Justice Statistics and the Office of Violence Against Women to conduct the Campus Climate Survey Validation Study, which is a methodologically based study to try to understand more about the magnitude and nature of the problem of sexual assault on college campuses and make sure that we could develop a survey instrument and a methodology that would collect valid and reliable data in an efficient way. Schools really need a good understanding of what's going on with their students. Um, schools provide resources to students. They need to know how common this problem is. Um, more importantly, they need to understand the nature of the problem. They need to understand where it's most likely to happen, when it's most likely to happen. Sexual assault across the board is the most underreported crime in the world. So the reality is, is that Colleges and universities right now don't know much of anything about the magnitude and nature of the problem of sexual assault among their students. We needed to make sure that we could develop a methodology that we thought did collect valid data on these concepts, um, and we do that using behaviorally specific terminology. Um, other problems in past research relate to low response rates. It's very hard to get a lot of people to respond to surveys. The sensitive subject matter intimidates some college students and some universities into um, either not wanting to conduct a survey or not wanting to participate in a survey. Our survey was validated through an extensive instrument development and implementation process. We offered incentives for participation, which was associated with very high response rates and a very representative sample. We had very little evidence of non-response bias. So it's the survey instrument and the methodology that we implemented produced very valid estimates of sexual assault and because we used a standardized approach across all of the nine participating schools we can credibly compare victimization rates from one school to the next. Collecting survey data in any form is, is typically an expensive endeavor but our methodology is extremely cost-effective and enables us to collect a lot of high-quality surveys quickly so we can give schools the information they need. So our goals were more methodological than substantive but ultimately the study went very, very well, and we were able to deliver results to the participating schools that they're now using to inform their policies and practices. And this is important not to call out universities that happen to have high prevalence estimates, but, but just for, for people to begin to understand that there's variation, for people to start thinking about what could be behind some of that variation, and to give schools information that they could use to try to tackle this problem and reduce the prevalence of sexual assault among their students. The impact that sexual assault has on men and women all over the country is profound. We know that it has a number of adverse consequences for victims, um, mental health consequences, physical health consequences. There are many academic consequences that schools need to be concerned about. We know anecdotally that many victims end up dropping out or transferring and not continuing their education. And it can have lifelong impacts on their mental and physical health. These are serious public health problems, a problem that exists on all college campuses and if we can start to understand the problem better, understand where this is a bigger problem than others, we can then start to address it with more effective prevention programming, services for victims, and things that ultimately make this less of a problem, but also help those who have been victimized cope a bit better.